in space. It is possible to have an infinite number of planes passing through a given point or a line. We can determine a unique plane in space under certain conditions. These conditions give us different forms of the equation of a plane. Let us see what these conditions are. We can determine a unique plane if we know the normal vector n to the plane and the distance d of the plane from the origin. The equation of the plane, in this case, is called the normal form of the plane. We can also determine a unique plane if the plane passes through a given point P and is perpendicular to a given vector N. A unique plane can be determined if it passes through three given non-collinear points A, B and C. A special case of condition 3 is that the three given non-collinear points through which the plane passes are points A, B and C. Where the planes cut the x, y, and z axis respectively. Thus, in this case, the intercepts made by the plane on the three axes are given, and the equation of the plane is called the intercept form. In this module, you will learn about the normal form of the equation of a plane, and the equation of a plane passing through a given point and perpendicular to a given vector. Let us start with finding the vector equation of a plane in normal form. Consider a plane in a three-dimensional coordinate system as shown. Draw a perpendicular from the origin to the plane. Let this perpendicular meet the plane at point P and be represented by vector OP. Let the perpendicular distance of the plane from the origin or the magnitude of vector OP be D. Note that here the value of D cannot be zero. That is, the plane does not pass through the origin. Let the unit vector in the direction of vector OP be vector N. Thus, Vector OP is equal to the length D multiplied by unit vector N. Let this be equation 1. Let Q be another point on the plane having position vector R. Thus, vector OQ is equal to vector R. Let this be equation 2. Let us draw vector PQ. Vector PQ lies on the plane and vector OP is perpendicular to the plane, which implies that vector OP is perpendicular to vector PQ. Since vector OP is perpendicular to vector PQ, their dot product is equal to zero. Let this be equation 3. Applying the triangle law of vector addition to triangle OPQ, we get vector PQ is equal to vector OQ minus vector OP. Substituting the values of the position vector of point Q and of vector OP from equations 1 and 2, we get vector PQ as shown. Substituting this value of vector PQ and the value of vector OP from equation 1 in equation 3. We get the result as shown. We already know that the value of D is not 0. Thus the expression reduces to the dot product as shown. Simplifying the dot product, we get that the dot product of vector R and unit vector N is equal to distance d of the plane from the origin. This equation represents the normal form of the vector equation of the plane.
Let us now derive the normal form of the Cartesian equation of a plane. Let the coordinates of point Q be x, y and z. Thus the position vector of point Q can be written in its component form as shown. Also, if L, M and N are the direction cosines of unit vector N normal to the plane, then unit vector N can be written in its component form as shown. Substituting the component forms of vector R and unit vector N in the vector equation of a plane in normal form, we get the equation as shown. On simplifying, we get the Cartesian equation of the plane in normal form. If the direction ratios of the normal to the plane from the origin are given, then the vector and Cartesian equations of the plane in their normal forms are as shown. Point P represents the foot of perpendicular OP drawn from the origin to the plane. Let us learn how to find the coordinates of point P. If the direction cosines of normal OP to the plane from the origin are L, M, N, and the distance of the plane from the origin is D, then the coordinates of the foot of the perpendicular, that is point P, are given by LD, MD, and ND, as shown. There is an infinite number of planes perpendicular to a given vector n in space. However, only one unique plane perpendicular to vector n can pass through a given point A. Let us find the vector equation of a plane passing through a given point A and perpendicular to a given vector n. Let vector A be the position vector of point A as shown. Consider another point P with position vector R on a plane as shown. Since points A and P lie on the plane and vector N is perpendicular to the plane, vector AP is perpendicular to vector N. This further implies that the dot product of vector AP and vector N is equal to zero. Let this be equation 1. Applying the triangle law of vector addition to triangle OAP and rearranging the result, we get the value of vector AP as shown in equation 2. Substituting the value of vector AP from equation 2 in equation 1, we get the vector equation of a plane passing through a given point and perpendicular to a given vector. Now, let us find the Cartesian equation of a plane passing through a given point A and perpendicular to a given vector N. Let the coordinates of the given point A be x1, y1, z1. Thus, position vector A can be written in its component form as shown. Also, let the coordinates of given point P be x, y, z. Thus, vector R can be written in its component form as shown. If the direction ratios of vector N are A, B and C, then vector N can be written in its component form as shown. Substituting the component forms of position vectors R and A and of vector N in the vector form of the equation, we get the equation as shown. On simplifying, we get the Cartesian equation of a plane passing through a given point and perpendicular to a given vector as shown here.